Hey guys, and welcome to Tasmania TV, where I'm doing this human bones bullet belt today. I'm gonna be working with paper clay today, but any kind of craft clay will do. Paper clay is super handy because it air dries, so you don't have to use an oven or anything like that. It looks like this comes in a big chunk, and it is sticky when you take it out of the pack, but it starts drying instantly, so you take it out in small portions, and then you close the pack with the rest of the clay so that it doesn't dry, and then you start working with that small portion, finish that, and then you get more. So what I'm doing here is creating a shape similar to that of the longest bone in our fingers. The idea for the bullet belt is that I'm creating this off of the longest part of the middle finger bones from all of my enemies. So basically the fuck you finger. So I am creating a shit ton of these and I'm making them different sizes. Neither one is perfect. They're not meant to be. That would make an extremely uninteresting belt if they all look the same. So I'm making some of them thicker, some are thinner, long, short. They're not matching each other perfectly, but they're similar in shape so that the belt will still look good. The most important thing to remember when creating this shape is to make sure that the outer edges are the thickest part of the entire bone because that will make sure that they stay put once they're on the belt so that they won't be moving around. So I'm creating, I didn't actually count how many I made, but it's probably like a hundred of them on here. And the clay dries the same color as it is when you work with it, which is a sort of super, super light gray. And if you want to keep them white, you can do that, but I want to make them look more realistic and make them stand out from each other so that they don't look like they were all made the same way, even though they differ in size. I let them dry overnight once I was done with the shape, and then it was time to start adding the color. And I'm using this Temp2 Dura palette, which is an alcohol activated palette. So you use isopropyl alcohol to activate the colors. And I'm actually using leftover color that is in the lid that is left over from mixing flesh tones. And this is very, very diluted now. So what I'm only going to do is super quickly go over each and every single bone and just kind of dab it lightly with that brush. Some of the bones will get more color, some will get less, they won't look exactly the same. And this is the base color for the bones. I'm gonna add more color later, but first I just wanna make sure that they're not that gray. Once I'm done with the base color, I'm gonna go back in and create a blood tone. I'm gonna be mixing red with black and a bit of orange because I don't want the blood to be too pink. And I'm gonna mix that in the lid and as you can see, it is super diluted. You do not need much color in order to get a result. And again, I'm being super fast when I'm putting this on. I want it to look like spatter and if you put too much attention into this, the details are gonna look fake. So yeah, we got all the blood in there. They look so awesome now. And it's time to put them together into the belt, which I'm gonna do by using two wires. I'm gonna create one wire row at a time, starting by creating the first loop. All ends, that means four, of the belt will have this loop. So it's the same exact thing you're gonna do for all four ends. So I'm just twisting that into a loop using my fingers and then I can use the tongs to make sure that nothing sharp is poking out. Then I'm just gonna start wrapping that around the bones one at a time. There are a bunch of different ways that you can wrap it, you can twist it, you can just wrap it just the way it is, but the most important thing is to tighten it so that the bones aren't too loose in there. You don't want them to come off. And then you just keep going, keep adding bones, Keep twisting them on there, but be careful because it is paper clay, which can break off if you're too rough with them. So you don't have to be super light-handed, but just don't be too rough. And as you can see, the one in the middle is a little loose right here, but that doesn't matter because the outer edges of the bones are thicker, so they're not gonna come off. So I'll just keep on adding them to the first wire, just as many as I think I'll need, and I'm mixing them in size and thickness next to each other so that they don't, again, look like they match too well. It's all just to make it aesthetically pleasing. Anyway, so when I get to the end of the first row, I'm gonna create another one of those loops, hide the sharp edge so that I don't hurt myself on it, and then get started on the second wire. Again, starting by creating a loop, 
and then just following what I did on the first row. And when you do the second row, this is more to just keep the shape. For the first row, it is most important to make sure that everything is tight and really on there. But for the second row, you can just work a little bit faster and not be as meticulous. Like I'm only wrapping them around each bone once with the second row of wire, as you can see here. But it's just to keep them in place. And the belt really stays intact this way. So the wire really keeps everything in place. Just make sure that you're using a wire that is neither too soft nor too hard. And then just closing that loop at the end. And then what we're gonna do is use these kind of closing devices that you use to make any kind of regular bracelet or necklace. I'm opening up that little loop at first and then sliding that into the loops that we created on the wire. And then taking that clasp, putting that inside of that mini loop and then using the tongs to close that up. But you can use any other kind of opening and closing if you like. This is just the stuff that I happen to have lying around. So the first one is done, and I'm just going to repeat the same step on the other one. Closing that up, and then the opening and closing is done, and so is our entire belt. If you want to add more blood and gore to it, go ahead and do that, but I want this to look like I've been collecting these for a while, so they kind of been drying and getting old and gross. This is a really fun belt. It's easy to put on and take off, and it goes with the sort of macabre look if you're into that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, post those in the comments and I will get back to you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Oh, and a little PS, you can obviously use the same technique to create things other than a belt, such as a bracelet or a necklace or even a crown. Go nuts!